How are you guys? Welcome back to War Gaming China. You know what this channel is about. I'm a war gamer. And I platform my understandings of the war of resistance between China and Japan from 1931 to 1945. And I do it for war gamers. Um, and today we are back at the Hebei Chaha border at Nanku for the 18 day Nanku campaign of August the 8th to 26th, 1937. Now, for this campaign, as I've been reading more and more about it, I've um, thought that some of the battles are perfect for rapid fire, but some of the smaller engagements are not. So today it's the uh, tent route. It's we're looking at Nanko Station. It's the 10th of August, 1937, four days before the fighting will start in Shanghai, and. One company of uh, Luo Fangui's 529th Infantry Regiment of the 89th Division of the 13th Army of Tang Enbo's 7th Army Group is resisting the Japanese advance into Shanxi along the Joyongguan Pass. And running through this pass is the uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, the Suyan Railway. And um, on on the eight on the tenth of August, the Japanese attacked both Nankow, the town of Nankow, and Nankow Station, in a strength of about five five thousand men. In, ex in excess of 5,000 men, so with two brigades of infantry and cavalry with some armored vehicles. Now, um, the Japanese will get into Nankow town, and by the end of the day, the Chinese would have to withdraw from Nankow station. Why do the Japanese want Nankow station so bad? Because it's raining, it's been raining for a long time, roads leading from Tianjin and Beiping through the plains are just fields of mud and Japanese tanks, the Japanese tanks that should be supporting this attack are bogged down in rivers of mud about six kilometers away. So the Japanese know that they need to take this station so they can put their train there artillery, armor, tanks and armor onto a train and get it to Nankow by offloading this, by using the station's facilities to offload their tanks. Now, Luo Fangui didn't have the men to defend both the town and the railway station in the same force. So only one company, one infantry company of the uh, I think it was a 6th Infantry Company of the 529th Infantry Regiment was assigned to defend the station. Now, preceding these events, the station has been bombed by fighters in the earlier, earlier, this is dawn, so, you know, pre-dawn attack, and the day before it, it was the subject of another infantry assault, a different infantry assault. Now. Bearing in mind that the attack on Nankawao and the attack on the station are on the same day, and commanded by the same commander, you might ask, well, why didn't you do it as, a, as one game? Why did you split this into two games? Well, the answer is that for, um, I find that for street fighting, which would be the case in Nanki Town, you need, um, you need quite a large table for a good street fight, even though it's in a small area. And I couldn't do the mountains around it. I couldn't do this battle justice terrain-wise 
if I'd incorporated the whole battle. I couldn't have got the mountains in. Because let's remember, as, as, this, as, as the Japanese enter the pass, the mountains on both sides of this pass, although not high, are steep-sided and the Chinese, the Chinese are occupying these uh, mountains, these ridges, and these ridges and peaks, and um, the Japanese have to go past them, so they're under small arms fire on the way to attack Nankau itself and, and the Nankau station. So, um, you know, setting that kind of a battle up with a long approach and then the actual fight for the for the objective, it was beyond. Um, I didn't think I could do a good job with it, but what I did think I could do a good job of is showing you a game that you could have on the dining room table. This game is uh, four foot by uh, five by five foot. So, you know, if you've got a good sized dining room table, you can do this game at home. Um, so it's three and a half foot by five foot. Hang on. No, it's four foot. Yeah, four foot. Um, I was messing around with the sizes of it. But you know, you can go smaller. So in, in the station itself, I have um, Chinese infantry. And I didn't put a full infantry company in. I put um, 12 infantry sections. It should be 15 plus a CO. But uh, 12 because I, you know, previous casualties. Um, no heavy weapons, no machine guns, no mortars. I did roll and the only weapon, heavy weapon they got was, because I did want to give them something even though on the day I doubt they would have had much assigned to them because the machine guns and 20 millimeter infantry guns are very precious weapons in the Chinese army. And I don't think Lu, Lu, Luo Fangui would have been willing to sacrifice them without getting them back at the station. So, you know, but I didn't know that. So I did um, roll the dice and they got given a 20 millimeter infantry gun. Okay, now if we go over here, we can look at the Japanese attack along the road. Now, it's turn one. I didn't, I don't have cavalry. But the combat cars, because they serve as the cavalry, will serve as the cavalry element, as well as one armoured car and a Saka for um, the armoured vehicle's presence. And the Chinese have mines, they have barbed wire. Now, it is true that the Chinese did have mines, it's uh, documented, but um, I, I, I couldn't find any direct reference that stated the Chinese had access to barbed wire in this battle, but um, historically it's not, it's not improbable, you know, um, it's, 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 very, it's very probable, but I haven't had it confirmed. So I put the, I put the um, homemade contactino wire down, and um, the Japanese are attacking in company strength. Now I know I said that, um, the attack that day was by over 5,000 Japanese troops, but the majority of the Japanese drive was for the Nanku town. And because um, the, the Japanese had realized that another choice that Luo Fangui, the Chinese commander, would have to face is that he would have very little artillery support. But he would have it. Now, in order to coordinate that artillery support, it would have been very, very, um, a lot more difficult than for a Western army. Um, so what I decided to do was, uh, just like in the bottom, you see the Chinese have to refire in the defense of Nanku town. Well, we don't see the Chinese have to refire in defense of the station because they just couldn't coordinate they didn't have enough radios, they didn't have enough um, field telephones to, um, to possibly equip just one company with the ability to, 
calling call in artillery support for its isolated position. It just, it just wasn't on the table for the, for the Chinese to be able to do that. Um, sorry, I was on the wrong side of the microwave, the microphone, so I might have been quiet for a second there. Anyway, so in company strength, what I've started with, it's turn one, and um, I'm playing rapid fire rules, but I'm going to use platoon based action. So um, I started off with the sec mortar sections opening up, and then being a truly cunning player. I've advanced the Japanese in the second part of their movement um, and they're all advancing under smoke towards the wire and their vehicles that will represent another company are coming on. Now um, if we look at this campaign, the Nankuo campaign, it's a Ko campaign. What I, uh, my Chinese is terrible, sorry people who speak Chinese. Um, I never really know how to pronounce anything on this channel, really. Um, but if we look at the Chinese at Nankuda campaign, if we look straight at the map, we go, well, why are the Chinese advancing into a place where they're already going to be almost outflanked from day one? Because every day of this battle, of this 18 days battle, the Chinese are being outflanked because the Japanese are pushing them through the pass. They're also pushing along the mountains. And they're also pressuring the rail, railway lines that feed this position. So, um, why, if we look at a map, it's very hard to see why this campaign takes place. Because, as, as you see, as soon as the army's in position, the Japanese begin their, mar their, their outflanking manoeuvre. But it's not about that. What this is about is that um it's not about that it's this is about the back the fourth coming battle of shanghai and chang knows that for that battle he needs to draw away the japanese he's already ordered the planes the northern planes be abandoned so his next step is how do we Main to ensure that the Japanese army is not at its strongest or in that much of a position to send troops to Shanghai when the Chinese launch their attack. Well, this is a good answer, isn't it? Have a campaign in Anku where the Japanese can see on their maps that it's a matter of maneuver to outflank these Chinese forces. I mean, there is going to be some fighting, but the force are finally out, but there's going to be a lot of marching. Um, as I said, both sides start out this campaign not in not a good position supply-wise. This is uh, the, ele the Japanese 11th Division. Now, to get here, it, it, it suffered on bad roads, its supply systems are strung out, its men have been wet and sleeping in the mud for uh, weeks now just to get to this position. So, um, by the 10th, the town, the capture of the town of Nangu would have looked like, and sleeping in beds in houses would have looked very good to the Japanese troops. Um, now, Tang Enbo, the overall Chinese commander, he does a very good job with what he's given to delay the Japanese for those 18 days and still retreat with his army. Badly battered and mauled, but intact. So today, as part of the Nankai campaign, it's just gonna be a dining room table size game. I'm gonna play it in eight turns. It'll be played at, once again, like I said, it'll be played at the company level which for me is something completely new. And we played using the rapid fire rules. We'll see how it goes. Um, eight turns, the Chinese have mines. Barbed wire said, um, what else do I need to tell you? Uh, during the, the, the other battle, like I said, I split this day's battle into two. So we'll, I'll be doing the uh, fighting for Nang Kou in a future, as a future scenario. And anything I missed, historically today 
because I'm sure there's always something. I'll um, try to remember about and put it in the battle at, you know, the epilogues that I do. All right, um, that's it for now. That's it from the Nanko campaign for now. Um, I'll see you after the game. Bye.